Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make chloroform and you just got 10% bleach and pure acetone. So, okay, a lot of people, the main thing about this is you have to get the volumes right. You do not want to have excess acetone or else it's really going to mess up your synthesis because you're going to have a lot of acetone dissolved in your chloroform or acetone is going to dissolve the chloroform or something. So this is the ideal ratio that you want is for every 1.27 milliliters of acetone use 61.4 milliliters of sodium hypochlorite. 10% solution. We're assuming that you're using 10%. So after that I came down to I'm using 7,570 milliliters of this and it's pretty much it's 1 in 48 ratio. So you're going to use 1 milliliter of acetone for every 48 milliliters of 10% sodium hypochlorite you use. So that leaves us with about 56, 156 milliliters of acetone. Okay, one of the most important things is to keep this reaction cool. So I got 10 gal, 10, or is that five pounds of ice? And you want to keep it cool, or else, because this reaction gets hot, it's exothermic, and the chlorine will just, I mean, the chloroform will just boil off because of the heat of this reaction. So you have to keep it cool, or else you're just gonna boil away all your chloroform out into the atmosphere because it's too hot. So here I go. I'm adding my bleach for my pool chlorine. It smells fantastic. And don't do this in any clothes. You don't want to lose. Because you'll probably splash. Okay. There's one gallon. Oh yeah, okay, so there we go, that's two gallons, 7,570 milliliters of 10% sodium hypochlorite solution. And I'm just going to give this a couple minutes to cool, chill out, and we'll come back and start adding our acetone. I'd like to say, don't ever measure out acetone in plastic, because it dissolves. Apparently organic solvents dissolve organic materials, go figure. So now I just have to hide this from my mom. Okay, so now we can begin adding our acetone. And I measured out 156 milliliters of acetone. A little bit over, because I figure some will just evaporate. Stuff. Okay, so we're gonna, what we do is we add it a little bit. Oh yeah, just a little bit by little. And then we... Stir it up. You gotta stir it up. We just add a little by little. Mm, it smells like chloroform. Okay. So we'll just add a little bit more. And we'll stir that baby up. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's obviously not going to warm up, but this is what you do. You keep adding this. I'm going to add this, and I'll, next up is I'll show you how to decant it. What? Huh? It smells like chloroform. Okay, well, while this is okay, you know, now you just stir this sucker up. got myself a nice long pole. If you have a long pole, make sure you use the clean side of your long pole. It might be important. I know you can't really see it, but that's how you do it. Very scientific method for making chloroform. Like, 
Yeah, okay. So this is still cooling. It's almost done, but... Okay, you can... Yeah, you can see that the color has changed and it's starting to get milkier and settle. We're gonna leave this for a couple hours. We'll come back to this in a couple hours, but... I know, some of you might be worried about That's what it looks like after only about 20 minutes. You see it got really cloudy and all that ice melted. It's starting to warm up. I might need some more ice, but it's pretty cool out today, so... Yep. You can kind of see that it's settled overnight. And it's got this... This other liquid on the bottom. And that is your chloroform. So we just pour the top layer off slowly, try to save the bottom, and we will put it in our container. And the grand total of the reaction is 140 milliliters of chloroform. And you can see that it's separated into a water layer, chloroform, and then some powder. I don't know what that is, but once they get a nice chemistry set, I'll be able to distill the chloroform and we'll know what it is. So yeah, that's it. Rate, subscribe, and you know, do all that stuff. Have a good day.